What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a full build guide on Wraith. Wraith is probably one of the strongest heroes at Roman or Gankin. She's relatively easy to play, and if you focus on your bullet damage, it'll make her a great choice for players with great aim. Wraith has great mobility, and she also has great single target damage. She scales quickly, and she dominates probably from the mid game afterwards. So if this sounds like the character for you, stick around and I will show you exactly how to use her. If you guys are enjoying the content and liking the build videos, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I'm live on Twitch most afternoons. Swing by, say hi, we could see some new people down there. Let's get into this video. Let's talk about Wraith's advantages and her disadvantages. So to start with, she has very high mobility and she's very slippery to kill because she's got a great second ability called Project Mind. This allows her to reposition really quickly, whether she's being ganked or she's the one ganking. She's also a very beginner friendly character, with a very basic and straightforward kit. She's quite easy to pick up as your first hero. She has high single target DPS, so her 1v1s are almost unmatched. This makes her a great hero for split pushing or just going to help the other lanes by ganking. And finally, her last advantage here, she has great late game crowd control. So her third talent point in telekinesis, her ultimate transforms from a single target ability to multiple. She can crowd control the whole enemy team or from this upgrade on her talent point. Now, let's talk about a few disadvantages with Wraith. She doesn't have the greatest damage in the early game. You do have to wait for a few items until you start to see that gun damage come through. Wraith's second disadvantage here is she's very squishy and she can easily be countered by long range heroes such as Vindicta and Grey Talon if Telekinesis is on a cooldown. And finally, I've found the card trick ability can be unreliable, not always hitting the enemy when you want it to, so that's just another thing to bear in mind. Now let's talk about Wraith's item progression. My first point is going to be in Wraith's card trick. You always want to start with card trick first. That extra charge at the start is going to benefit you a lot in the early game. I then like to unlock Project Mine. You only need one point in this one to begin with anyway. I just like to have it unlocked, as if you're going to get ganked, you can escape quite quickly, or if you're the one doing the ganking, you can enter quite quickly also, so it's a great ability to have at the start of the game. I then like to unlock full auto, so this is going to boost Wraith's fire rate by 20%, and this is something super useful to have in the early game. I then like to get telekinesis next, this is super useful because the first talent is going to give you that cooldown reduction. I then like to put my points back into card trick, so the second talent point is going to give me plus 50 damage, and then the next point after that is going to give me plus 50% card summon rate. I then like to put another point back into Project Mine. This is going to give us a 300 shield for 8 seconds when we teleport. So when we're engaging on a fight, we're going to have a shield. Or for example, we could be disengaging, we're going to be shielded also. I then like to put another point into Telekinesis. This is going to increase the stun by half a second. Now, let's talk about Wraith's abilities. So her first ability is called Card Trick. This ability recharges by attacking enemies with your gun. While it's a good skill, to do damage early in the laner phase, it does fall off considerably later into the game. However, you should still use card trick to bully the enemies out of your lane and have a massive advantage over them. So one unique thing about this ability is, when you do launch the card, you can actually control the direction of it with your crosshair. So if your enemy is behind the corner, this means you can follow it around the corner to hit them, or if they dodge it and you're good enough, you can actually get the card to follow them too. The first talent in this ability is going to give you plus one charge. The second talent point is going to give you plus 50 damage. So it's going to be 130 damage base. And the final talent point here is going to give you 50% card summon rate. So when you are shooting the players, it just means you're going to get the cards quicker. Wraith's second ability, Project Mind. You want to use this to escape ganks and to get away from losing fights by repositioning. Always try and reposition yourself on top of a building, so this gives you some height over them, if possible. This also makes you difficult to catch, because you have the vertical advantage over your enemies. The first talent point here is going to add 15 meters to its cast range, making it a 40 meter teleport. The second talent point here is going to provide 300 bullet shield for 8 seconds on teleport, and the shield amount scales with spirit power. This makes it great for offense and defense. So say you're engaging in a fight, you're going to be using your bullet shield first, making you harder to kill. Or if you're trying to escape a fight, you're also going to have a bullet shield to help you not die. And the third and final talent point here is going to give it a 28 second cooldown. Wraith's third ability, Fall Auto. 
This is Wraith's bread and butter ability. While it can be used on cooldown to clear waves and jungle camps, it's best used when you have a chance to DPS a target that's been trapped into your telekinesis. The great thing about this ability, it gives yourself and everyone in the AoE around you a bonus fire rate. So you get 20% and they get half, so 10% fire rate. The first talent point here is going to reduce the cooldown by 14 seconds. The second talent point is going to give you plus 5 spirit damage per bullet while the ability is active. And finally, the third talent point is going to give you plus 35% bullet lifesteal, also while the ability is active. Wraith's final ability and her ultimate, Telekinesis. This is one of the strongest CCs in the game, as it can be used to lock down an enemy entirely, so you can kill them before they can even react. The first talent point is a minus 28 second cooldown, allowing you to use the ultimate more frequently. The second talent point is going to give your stun an extra half a second. And the third and final talent point here, the best yet, is going to turn your ultimate into a massive AoE around Wraith, allowing you not just to use it on a single target, but everyone within that AoE is going to be affected. So this is Wraith's best upgrade on the ultimate. You can now CC the whole team instead of just using it on one singular person. During the early laning phase, make sure to hit the enemy player as much as possible with your gun, as doing so charges up your card trick and allows you to use the skill to further poke the enemy out of position, possibly even pick up a few early kills. I like to prioritise Infuser as your first item as it offers lifesteal and it pairs really well with your full auto ability. This is going to greatly increase your damage alongside Ammo Scavenger. So to begin with, you want to focus on farming troopers in the lane and denying the enemy to pull ahead in souls. Wraith's damage falls off hard with distance, so do try and fight around the middle of the lane. You want to use the pillars and the bridge as cover as much as possible. You don't want to be pushing past your troop wave into the enemy troopers as they're going to deal a lot of damage. So in summary for this early game, Headshot Booster, Basic Magazine and Sprint Boots should be the only other items you're buying to boost your damage before you buy your Tesla Bullets. Tesla Bullets are going to be your main power spike in the early game. It's going to allow you to do high burst damage when you use your full auto ability, especially when you hit those headshots. If you do find yourself struggling in the lane, healing right can offer good healing without you requiring to go back to the base. But bear in mind you must remain outside the enemy range as any attack you receive from enemies will cancel the item. This is purely if you're struggling a little bit in the laning phase to begin with. You should also sell this item later into the game as it lowers in value when the game advanced. The mid game is when Wraith really begins to shine. You want to aim to push the enemy's guardian and get rid of it before you begin to gank other lanes. You want to use your telekinesis and pick up easy kills in other lanes to boost yourself and your team's souls. Using your telekinesis gives you an element of surprise as you can come up behind the enemy and they don't really necessarily know you're there. So once you've got your Tesla bullets in the mid game, Wraith is one of the quickest heroes to clear neutral jungle camps and vending machines. This should be your main focus during the mid game as you need to build up souls and this will give you a massive advantage. So I like to focus on getting my pristine emblem to further boost my damage, especially against enemies above 50 HP. Then I like to work on getting my active reload. This is going to further increase my damage while using bullet resist shredder to decrease enemy resistance. Bullet lifesteal and escalating resilience help a lot with your dueling, making wraith shine in 1v1 situations. And this can also help you push your advantage in the team fights too. Also you want to pick up Suppressor here for heroes that have a high fire rate, for example Hayes or McGuinness. And my last pickup here in the mid game is going to be Enduring Speed. So during the late game, what I like to do as Wraith is control the mid boss. I also like to pick off lone enemies that are out jungling or split pushing. So this is going to deny their growth and push your advantage even more. So your advantage as Wraith is that she's great in 1v1 scenarios and she can easily gank stationary heroes like McGuinness, Bebop or Lady Geist. So if you are laning against these enemies, always press this advantage you have on the stationary targets that are always out of position because this is just going to snowball and you're going to push your advantage even more throughout the late game. So in the late game here, Titanic Magazine should be the first item you buy. It's going to increase your gun damage and your ammo. And it pairs perfectly with Vampiric Burst, which increases your lifesteal even further when you're increasing your fire rate. I then like to pick up Veilwalker to become invisible when you pass through the Cosmic Veils. This makes you an even more dangerous ganker in the late game, as this allows you to position close for your telekinesis. And finally, my last pickup here for Wraith is going to be Silencer. 
So guys, in conclusion, Wraith isn't the best to begin with, but once you have a few items under your belt, and you start focusing on a blend of gun and spirit damage, her ability to split push, gank, and jungle makes up for it. She's incredibly strong in 1v1 scenarios, and her late game gets even better with her third talent point in her ultimate. So, whether you're a new player or you're just looking to refine your gameplay on Wraith, my build provides a solid foundation to excel and push the limits of what this hero can do in Deadlock. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you are enjoying these build videos, be sure to smash that like button. It means a lot to me and it helps the video out a lot too. Also, check out the Twitch. I put it in the description. We're live most afternoons. So hopefully I'll see you guys down there. And until next time, take care.